what I'm always kind of looking at is like, is there another way to kind of create more of an emotional connection to something? I think what's uh, interesting about the way that I've been uh, approaching storytelling is, is looking and saying, okay, well, those formerly known of, as the audience are actually becoming collaborators in the work that I make. And I'm thinking about them in, in, in that relationship in new ways and really kind of looking at it as almost like designing with instead of designing for. When people hear it, um, they initially think, oh, well, if you're if, you're, if they're collaborators, they're obviously shaping and building the story. But what we do is we have a design where we find the places where we want them to kind of be able to collaborate within the process, places where we're able to give them certain tools and certain, certain, uh, a certain foundation so they can expand upon it, right? There's like a story architecture to it. And it's very well mapped out to a certain point of like, okay, this is where the characters come in, this is how the story works. And then we, we work to expand that to leave room for experimentation from the audience. But it's more about like how can we really shift um, kind of the collaborative process so then those people can extend those worlds. It doesn't have to just be necessarily affecting the canon of what we're doing, you know, like the core story, but we're setting it up and, and hopefully leaving room for people to play. And I'll give you an example um, with a project that we have that's called Leica's Adventure. Um, I have a company called Reboot Stories and we focus very much on this idea of how storytelling mixed with kind of design science and game mechanics, technology, and um, design thinking can be used as a, a vehicle for digital literacy and effectively for social good. And so uh, we have this little robot who's named Laika, and it's a hero's journey. She's a scientist from another planet, and her, her planet's become decimated. And so she's sent on this journey to come to Earth to try to figure out things about Earth that might help her save her home planet, right? And so she goes around and she collects data as she actually travels. And so in that particular instance, we were building like a framework where school children can kind of come in and participate. And we recently did this amazing kind of uh, event in, in Northeast Philadelphia in a, in a very bad area of, of Philadelphia at this, at this great place called the Village of Arts and Humanities. It's been set up for about 26 years. It's a after school program. We brought her there and we told the kids, here's Laika, she's come from another planet and now she has just landed where you are and she needs to know about what this planet's like, and you need to help her understand that. And so the kids started to create stories around that, and they started to create, like, how would they tell Laika about where they live and the environment that they're in? And then they started to do really cool things with Laika herself, because is a connected toy, right? She, can, she has sensor technology in her, she makes use of open source technology, and so Leica can read temperature and she can read light sensitivity and she can read air quality and she can do all these really interesting things. They uh, effectively uh, recorded this amazing theme song for her um, and then they shot photography and they did these drawings and then they put it all on and they showed Leica what it was. But at the core of it was this idea of like, how do you ignite the imagination of many? How do you effectively get people engaged in, in, in something? So I think when I think about the storytelling, I'm thinking about those design elements. Where can I build a very strong world, strong characters, that hero's journey, but then how can I let people come in and they can become the protagonist in their own hero's journey? And so I think I'm, I'm trying to find and, and design these bridges between things, bridges between the digital and the analog world the real world, and how can I move a story in a pervasive way that allows people to engage in it, and, and hopefully we're creating stories that are compelling enough that people want to do that, that they want to find the time to live with something beyond that initial watching of it. Hi, my name is Lance Weiler, and you should really subscribe to Thinker, because I do too.